Before I got my parts powder coated, I had a few more things to do to finish them up. I still needed to get the resting tab for the GPU made, so I woke up early to get it out of the way. I had some aluminum angle bar I thought would be perfect for my application, after I cut and honed it down. I wanted to use flush rivets, so I swapped out my bit for a 3M countersinking bit. Because I want the tower to appear seamless in the front, I locked my plunge depth of my drill to 90% material thickness. It took quite a few test fits before the rivet sat perfect. Because my manual pop rivets tool head was interfering with the angle bar, I could only get the rivet started. To make a strong press fit, I had to finish up by punching the rivet in. I probably should have used press fit rivets to begin with, but I used what I had available. I finished faster than I expected, so I had time to work on the mounting bracket for the pump. Of course, I had to assemble the pump to test fit it. I'm using a Lang DDC, as usual, with the Coolant's heatsink case, and I found this actually pretty tricky to install. The stock mounting hardware Coolant's includes is actually really versatile, and I usually can use them in my mods, but it was just not going to work for this particular one. I have some scrap metal, which is actually a pump mount for another chassis I used to build in small runs, and I'm going to use that. After some modification, it should help my pump mount perfectly. After the new holes were marked and drilled, I need to bend it into its new shape, which looks like a squished S. This will let the pump bolt to the inside of the tower and be offset enough for the cables. When I was happy with the bend, it was off with my parts to get them powder coated. My parts might be out of commission for a while, but there's plenty of stuff I can still work on. Uh, I usually sleeve my own cables, but I'm too far behind in this project to do that. So at the suggestion of my modding buddy, Brian Carter, I totally cheated. I had Prima Chill build my custom length cables and sleeve them for me in a gunmetal gray. They turned out really nice. Maybe too nice. I might be tempted again to do this in the future. I felt totally guilty and I figured I had to rectify my laziness somehow. So the R9 Nitro uses two 8-pin connectors, but the Silverstone small form factor power supply only has one 8-pin connector. Now, Silverstone does include a cable which is compatible with this setup, but I want my cables to flow smoothly down all the way into two separate connectors. This means that I have to mod the power supply, and I guess I found a way to rectify my laziness after all. After discharging the power supply as much as possible, I threw it on my anti-static mat and began voiding my warranty. This unit crams an incredible amount of high-quality components inside the case. I took extra care to preserve the heat transferring pad during the disassembly. And here were my targets. These solder points are on the back side of the 8-pin, and my plan was to solder a new harness to them. Luckily, I didn't have to buy a new connector, because I had tons of them in a drawer. Or so I thought. Hmm. Well, <laughs> see? Never throwing out any power supply trimmings did come in handy. With my connector in hand, I traced the old cutout into a piece of paper as a template. Finding a place for the cutout was actually pretty hard, as there's just not a lot of extra space in this compact unit. Plus, I wanted it to be neat, which was the whole point of this mod in the first place. With my template marked, I needed to disassemble the connector for the die with my trusty tool. As I just mentioned, I use vinyl die from VHT, not paint. Now, it's not as super durable on hard plastic surfaces like that of the connector, but it is permanent for rubber insulation, like on power supply cables. I still think it's a better option than paint, as it's pitch black and doesn't coat the cables so much as it penetrates them. While the die was setting, I worked on the cutout for the female Molex connector. This cutout is tiny and was a bit tricky. I started by drilling out as much as I could and then rough cut a box out with tiny files. Then I used a larger file to make the shape perfect. I didn't like the punched fan grill that the power supply has and I wanted a bare look to match the rest of the fans in the build. 
but this cutout was much easier than the one for the Molex connector. When I finished with the metalwork, I painted the parts in my go-to black texture paint. I love this Rust-Oleum truck bed coating. Now, <laughs> it's terrible as truck bed coating, but it's pretty awesome for computer parts. The texture makes the part more interesting, especially when you start to get different textures in your build. Because the build is all black, I like to use as many different textures as possible to give it a raw dynamism. Also, when you have complementary colors, like all the different grays and blacks I have, it starts to make the mod look really nice without being too boring. While my power supply parts and pieces were drying, I got straight to work on the guts. After measuring and cutting my wires, I stripped the ends for crimping. I keep lots of Molux Minifit Junior pins in stock, and had ones perfect for this connector. Soldering this board was a pain, as my good soldering station wasn't available. I used heat shrink on the wires, and pushed it as far down as possible to prevent any shorts. It took quite a while, but eventually I had some good connections, and they checked out okay. Uh, of course, when reassembling the power supply, one of my wires broke, and I pretty much had to redo everything just to get that one wire. Now, I need my Molex connector to angle forward about 10 degrees in order to clear the pump heatsink. After forming the angle with cables, I applied a liberal amount of hot glue to the inside. The trick to using hot glue for this application is to use a heat gun after it's applied, and this gets melted into all the cracks. All the surfaces need to be hot for the glue to flow into them, so this is pretty much the same principle as soldering. With my connector at the appropriate angle, it was time to Mary Poppins this sucker. Now, I don't have any magic nanny power, so it was actually kind of a pain. When it was together, I cleaned up the glue surface by applying heat, just as before, to make it look as professional as possible. When I'm done, I'll put one more coat of paint to get the connectors, glue, and edges a perfect uniform black. <laughs> yes, guys, I'm painting the blue connector this time. So all my parts are now powder coated and they came out fantastic. The color that I went with is this textured black. It's a special black that I've been using with NFC systems for a long time for my S4 Mini and my S3 Mini chassis. And the reason that I um, have been using it is because it is extremely, I'm not using that word lightly, scratch resistant. It is super durable. You can throw it in your backpack, you can sit it on the counter, and you're not gonna scratch it. But it still has a really beautiful look to it. Um, I don't know if you can see in the sunlight, but it has this um, kind of iridescent, sparkly look to it in high CRI lighting. It's absolutely gorgeous, but underneath, you know, white flat lighting like you see in a normal room, it just has this really smooth, as far as color, even color um, black, just dark black. It doesn't pick up a lot of um, uh, highlights and stuff from different lamps, so it just, it looks really good underneath all lighting conditions. You know, the texture is nice and smooth. If you can see, if I want to put my hand next to it, it has a nice little glow to it. Um, it's not so rough that it completely blocks out um, luminosity. I, I don't know if I'm using the right words here. And I just love how it wraps around edges too because it doesn't have that straight highlight you'd get with the gloss paint, but it kind of scatters every, the light. It just looks, it looks really good. And I'm really excited to put this together. It turned out real good. <laughs> with my parts in hand, I began the exciting assembly process. First up was to mate my L brackets with the tower with some black grade 10 low profile hex cap bolts. Overkill, I know, but they look pretty cool. My 1 inch thick cell cast acrylic base was almost ready to be attached, but I need to do one more thing. Well, two if you count peeling the protective coating off. I want the acrylic to retain its glass like top surface, but be black like the rest of the build. To achieve this look, I need to paint the bottom. Rather than using normal paint, which can scratch and tear, I used a billion coats of Plasti Dip, which <laughs> translates into about half a can. The bottom looked ugly when finished, but the purpose is a durable, non-sliding, thick rubber base. The top turned out exactly as I imagined, though. Black with a super amount of depth, because it, uh, <laughs> basically has a 1 inch of clear coat. The base bolt is in pretty easy with some pitch black grade 10 nuts, and I reward myself by peeling off the masking tape. Speaking of hardware, there are $60 of bolts and nuts specifically purchased for this build. This naked, open-air chassis relies on showcasing the structure, so it's important for me to use premium fasteners, even if they are way overkill for their intended use. The standoffs are also really beefy, almost three times the mass of a standoff normally used in a computer chassis, not counting the length. 
The strength is definitely overkill here, but the width of the mating surface is pretty functional and will make mounting the motherboard simple. Some of the bolts for the standoffs need to sit flush in the motherboard tray, and as planned it all worked out. The last feature of the motherboard tray is the strong steel bracket that the GPU will hang from. I attach this with three bolts that thread into the tapped holes of the motherboard tray. I'm really happy with how the motherboard tray turned out. It's functional, durable, and personally I think it looks great. My happy thoughts <laughs> meant nothing though if the tray didn't mount solidly with the tower. But it did. Things are starting to come together, but in order for everything to work, the harder the system needs to fit properly. The wire for the pump is just way too short to reach the motherboard header I want to use, which is the header for the main CPU fan. I measured the distance with some string and worked on extending the cable. When the cable made, I worked on mating the pump bracket and pump together. Everything fit great so far, and I like the functionality and look of the S-shaped bracket. Well, I liked the functionality assuming it was going to be functional. The bracket was a close fit, which is good because it means it should be solid. The pump looked like it was in the right spot, but I couldn't be sure until the radiator was in its place. I had to modify the bolts I bought to be the proper length, and once they were, the installation was pretty simple. What I like about how my radiator mounts is that the holes in the tower are large enough for heads of the bolts to pass through. The idea is that when everything's in place, I just need to lift up the radiator a tiny little bit, and then I can pull it out. That way I don't need to unscrew or disassemble anything. Only problem was my pump was definitely not high enough, so I needed to modify my bracket. Pump Bracket 2.0 gave me the extra clearance I needed, and the day was saved. So one of my favorite parts of any build is of course the liquid cooling. Liquid cooling can be exciting because you get to play with really expensive toys and put them together like a big kid's Lego set. And also exciting because if something goes wrong, well, I'd qualify that as exciting, but that's the bad kind of exciting, and today I want to work on the good kind of exciting and take some good precautions so I don't have problems down the road. The first thing is, of course, to design the loop so that the highest point in the system is the fill port. I don't want my CPU block to be the highest. I definitely don't want my radiator to be the highest point. I want the liquid coolant in the reservoir to be well above everything else. That way it'll be easy to bleed, and I won't have a lot of problems trying to get you know, pump cavitation solved and that kind of thing. Secondly is to make sure that you start off with a really clean loop. So I cleaned out my radiator earlier with um, water and then I put some uh, vinegar in it and let the vinegar sit for a good long time. It doesn't even hurt to pour some rubbing alcohol inside and let it sit just an extra little bit of precaution so you don't have bugs growing in your system. And there's two things that I use too to prevent bugs. I have my nuke, my copper biocide, and my silver kill coil. To be honest, I don't know if this does anything, but the pros recommend it, and the guys that recommend it are really good at what they do. So I like to stick these just to be safe. And finally, I use distilled water. There's a lot of coolant out there in the market that prevents bugs from growing, and also prevents corrosion, and even supposedly has good thermal properties. Um, but the bottom line is, I think that they have to be replaced a little bit too often. That being said, I have some coolants in my customer system that's <laughs> going on two years now and I haven't had to replace it and I go check on it every now and then, so. But for me, I like to use water because I like to drain my loop often and it's just less messy, less sticky. I like the water. So of course the graphics card in my build is not gonna be sitting inside the motherboard. It's gonna be hanging from the top. And to do that, I'm gonna to have to use a riser ribbon, like this one. Riser ribbons have been pretty popular in modding for the past two years or so. I've been using them quite liberally for my mini ITX systems and even had one developed, but I was looking for something a little bit longer and my buddy Brian Carter told me about this company called Lee Heat. So I contacted Lee Heat and they sent me like super, super fast, these awesome cables. They are fully shielded, all black, just well built, gorgeous, and so they sent me some benchmarks as well, some screenshots, and I was pretty impressed. I really like these guys, I really like these. So if you need some riser ribbons, check out Lee Heat. Great customer service too. I, I just gotta do a shout out because they were so nice to me. Because I disassembled my water block, I had to quickly check and see uh, how to put it back together again because it's really important to get all those little pieces aligned the right way. The crinkle black powder coat in the CPU retainer made the tolerance pretty tight, but I had a rubber mallet handy to persuade them to fit. 
The X99 socket is really awesome because you don't need to fool with special brackets or exotic mounting hardware to attach a heatsink. I just threaded in the post which came with my water block, dropped the block on, and in a couple minutes it was safely and tightly clamped together. I could have waited to install the angled fittings, but I was so eager to see how they looked, I um, went ahead and put them on right away. I took the opportunity to clean some of the parts before they went into the chassis, Novus 1 for the acrylic res, and rubbing alcohol for the motherboard. I was happy to see that the motherboard lined up perfect. I had to balance it while the first screw went in, but after that it was a breeze to install it in this vertical orientation. The last two screws to go in hold the I.O. cover onto the board, which I also had powder coated to match the rest of the chassis. These extra little parts scattered throughout the build will help tie the overall look together. It had been a while since I used compression fittings, but I really like the look and functionality of Coolance's new ones. They certainly are much easier to install than clamps. Well, they are if you care about which way the clamps face, I guess, which <laughs> I do. The Primo Chill tubing I'm using is awesome because it can bend and twist quite a bit without kinking, which means that it's thicker and makes installation more difficult. To aid in the installation, I use a heat gun to warm the tubing up, and then use rubbing alcohol as a lubricant to help it slide over the barb. I've installed enough tubing to have a good feel for how much I need in a run, and my basic trick is to cut off two more inches than I think I need after I measure the tubing. This is a very loose rule of thumb, but it's way better to have a run too long than to throw it out on account of it being too short. Although the Primo Chill tubing is quite stiff and maybe hard to work with, the compression fittings offset the challenges and I had all my tubing installed pretty quickly, including that run from out the radiator to the inside of the inlet pump, which is what I was worried about. There's a lot of tight bins in there. Using a freshly opened container of distilled water, I filled my massive reservoir. I externally hooked up power to my pump and breathed a sigh of relief as my system's magnetic heart began circulating the coolant. I gave the system some time to close the major air gaps, and when the liquid was circulating well, I added some PT nuke, which is copper sulfate. It's going to take some time to fully bleed. The pump bracket needed to be adjusted to be properly parallel with the board, but other than that the cooling system was looking pretty good. Maybe the tubing could stand a few tweaks as well. Unfortunately, it seemed as though the system was leaking and there was an alarming amount of water coming from the pump. I immediately drained the system to find the leak, which turned out to be the cause by the reservoir not being screwed in tight enough. After my quick, simple fix, I filled it again and put a couple more drops of the PT nuke. The last component of the cooling system were the silent system fans. These Intermax fans sit midway on the horizon of the motherboard and push air behind the motherboard as well as over the RAM, MOSFETs, and other critical components. I took the stickers off because, um, uh, weight reduction? I just preferred the look. The fans went in pretty nicely, no thanks to my super wobbly table. The mod itself is pretty darn sturdy, but the mass amount of metal in it combined with its height weren't helping the table any. Well, I got it finished, and I gotta say, it turned out really well. It's amazing what planning can do ahead of time, because I was able to model out those two beans in the computer. Everything fit real well, had great clearance. Usually when you get to this stage in the project, you're starting to try to put your tubing and your little fittings together, and you're realizing things aren't fitting together right, you have to make adjustments and shift everything, and you have to drill through clean new paint, and it's just, <laughs> I've done this before, and it's really nice when it all goes together smoothly. I had one concern when building that tubing, but that Primo Chill tubing I use is awesome, awesome stuff. I have a really, really tight bend, but it just looks smooth as glass. Like it just, I, man, it looks great. It really did work out well. It's really cool at this stage of the project too to see how everything's coming together. I'm really glad I took the extra time to get some of my liquid cooling parts and motherboard parts painted to match the rest of this, the whole assembly. I think it ties everything together real well and I'm, I'm really happy with how it's turning out. The fans went in pretty simple. I thought it was going to be a little bit of a problem because I'm using these tiny little screws and it was just going to be a pain to get the little nuts on them to put them in, but because the bracket actually held them in place real well, there wasn't an issue at all. Um, <laughs> it went in real simple. I have one tip from um, past experience and that's to use a secondary power supply, jump it, and hook your pump up to it. That way if there's a leak overnight and you're not paying attention and liquid gets down, it's not going <laughs> to destroy your power supply and other things as well. It's always really a good idea to test your whole setup with a power supply outside of your computer. Something else to think about too, pumps actually can get pretty darn hot 
and I've left a pump on before for like a 24 hour testing period and there wasn't a lot of liquid in the system and there was an air bubble and because there was an air bubble the pump cavitated and the pump overheated and broke so I don't think that's gonna be a problem with this setup one because there's so much liquid in here that I think I'm gonna be okay two the big bubbles are starting to go away I gotta say there is one thing that I kinda messed up on uh, my original plan had the uh, bottom fitting being the in for the CPU block because that's what I looked at in the pictures online but it turns out that it, actually the bottom fitting is the out so I was hoping my air bubbles would travel up and then the highest point in the system which is this uh, CPU block not this whole system but the running system um, the air bubbles would travel up and then easily go back down this curve because things are reversed air bubbles are getting caught up in here for a little bit and that's what's causing it to take so long to bleed I'm just gonna leave it on overnight I'm pretty confident that air bubbles are going to be gone tomorrow when I wake up and the pump is going to be dead silent. There's not a heck of a lot left to do, but it's going to take a while. I got to do some cable management and get all my wires and everything hooked up and hidden. And then I got to crown everything with the GPU and I'm, I'm super excited for it to be done. And also because I'm going to be with a computer for a couple of days. So liquid cooling is done. Everything bled really well overnight. Pump's nice and quiet. I'm going to put the power supply in and just kind of work on the cabling for a little bit. So the power supply mounts by sandwiching the metal of the power supply case against the fan and the outside of my chassis using these little fan screws, which happen to look really nice. The power supply installed nicely, as did most of the cables, but I had a very hard time Cable, with the 8-pin CPU power. Just be nice! I needed it to bend nicely so it looked like it was flowing backward underneath the motherboard, but this was definitely easier said Don't than done. my kayak! No! Okay, you look good. Please stay this way forever. Finally, when I was happy with the look of the 8-pin, I began the work of installing the R9 Nitro by first putting in the Lee Heat PCIe riser ribbon. The ribbon was the perfect length. I was worried for a bit that I had measured it wrong, got it too long, or maybe even too short. The GPU went in quite nicely, and it appeared that my bracket system was as sturdy and effective as a normal case. With the GPU in place, I worked on arranging and combing the cables. They cooperated with me to produce a smooth, flowing look. Over the next day, I put some more polish into the system, doing minor things to get it looking better. It probably would take another month or so to get the system competition ready, but I was happy enough with it to give it a photo shoot. I waited for night by spending the day cleaning the disaster area that had become my shop. When it was clean, I set up my equipment. It might not have turned out perfect, but hopefully I can make up for it with some Mozart. Mozart makes everything look better. It feels really good to be done. This project took two months longer than I expected it to, but I think that's kind of part of the process of filming the whole thing, which I actually am starting to really like. So in times past, um, when I was doing a mod, I would certainly make them more complex, a lot more time to the actual building process but 
<laughs> you'd go and you'd show your mod to somebody and you know they might look at it for two seconds and have really no idea about what goes into one. And this way I feel like the viewers are accompanying me. The people that I want to see my mod are not just getting to see the final product, they're getting to see the whole thing. Maybe I'm breaking the fourth wall here a little bit, or third wall. I'm a better photographer than I am a cinegrapher, cinematographer. And really, that's not even saying that much. You know, usually after I take the final pictures, I'm done with the mod. You know, like I really don't ever want to see it again after spending, you know, 150, 200 hours on it. But this particular project, um, I feel differently about. Uh, there's just something about it. It's so open in its structure that it's just begging to be expanded on. And I think that in the future, I might actually do that this year. You know, I, I did learn a lot this build. You know, you always do. And this time I actually gained a lot of self-confidence because I went into the project trying to use the plasma cutter, something I've never used before, and I failed at it, utterly failed at it. But I was really surprised with how well the jigsaw did. The jigsaw cut those metal plates perfectly. Absolutely thrilled. I'm definitely going to reach for it when I go to cut plate again. As far as design goes, next time I do a mod, I'm going to work the curved surfaces so they're only going to be 90 degree bends. Now when I say 90 degrees, I mean they could be 30 degrees or 32 degrees, 31. But what I really mean is, you know, having more than one curve on one piece of plate. You know, that looks really elegant, but it's really hard to get things looking straight and even. And it was a really big pain to hammer all that material. You know, a lot more goes into the project even than what comes out in the film. You know, I just don't have time to put everything into context. You know, there's a lot of failures that I have to work myself out of a hole over and over again. So is the mod perfect? <laughs> Absolutely not. Is the video project perfect? Far from it. But I really enjoy doing it, and I hope that you guys enjoyed accompanying me. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And I hate to tell you this, but you really just watched a four-part series that was just leading up to my product placement. This is my S4 chassis and it is now available for pre-order. Maybe even by the time you watch this, you can actually get one in your hands. Well, since I have your attention, if you like this video, I have more of them. And if you are interested in the S4 chassis, just check me out on my website at nfc-systems.com. Great ending to a great day. Great month, really. Though I hate that eight pin connector. Thank you.